users can now drop map markers onto our map and it looks good. But they can't do anything with them. They can't add a custom name or their own description. And it's not ideal. Now, fixing this requires a couple of steps, but it really brings the whole thing together and you'll learn new things along the way. First, we want to show some kind of sheet when the user chooses a map annotation, giving them the chance to edit or view details somehow. Now, the way I've done sheets previously would have meant adding two properties here. One to track if the sheet's showing or not right now, and one to track what data we want to pass into the sheet, what place was selected, for example. This time, though, we're going to do that same job with just one. So add this now to content view. At state, private var, selected place is an optional location. What we're saying is we may or may not have a selected place for our map to work with. And that's all SwiftUI needs to know to present its sheet. As soon as we place a value into there, we're saying, hey, it's done, show the sheet. And when you dismiss the sheet, it'll be set back to nil. Even better, SwiftUI will automatically unwrap the optional for us before it creates the sheet. So we know we'll always have a real value there. So let's give it a try now. Down here, we'll say there's a modifier for our uh, Z stack using sheet item dollar selected place with a place coming in and then text place dot name. As you can see, this thing takes an optional bind to work with, but also a function to call, in this case, an inline closure that will receive the unwrapped version of this. That's the place coming in. It's an unwrapped place to work with, not the, uh, the optional version there, which is why we can say show place.name and not use nil coalescing or similar to handle the option. And now to bring the whole thing to life, we can go back up to our map annotation, we've got a vstack here, and add an on tap gesture that sets selected place to be our location value that was passed in from our map with its annotation. That's it. We now press command R, present a sheet showing the selected names of the location when it's tapped. So I'll go to here, press plus, tap on that thing, and boom, in its slide. Now this kind of optional binding isn't always possible, of course, it doesn't always work, um, but where it is possible, I think it makes a much more natural code. You know, Swift's behavior of automatically unwrapping the optional is just really, really helpful. Now, of course, just showing the place's name isn't too helpful in this sheet. So the next step is to make a meaningful detail view here where the user can see and adjust the location, name, and description. Now this needs to receive a location to edit, which place was chosen, and then allow the user to adjust the values for name and description, of course. But then when we're finished, send back a new location. Here we go, it's tweaked. Effectively, it acts like a function. We give it parameters, a return value back. As always, we're going to start small and work our way up. So start with a new SwiftUI view. Call this thing edit view. And then we'll say it has a few properties. One is an at environment for dismiss. So we can use our dismiss action, var dismiss. Then the location to show. Then some state to store the new name and new description. So we'll say at state private var name is a string and at state private var description is a string. Then in our body, we'll say as a navigation view with a form and a section inside there showing a text field of our place name, place space name, I guess, and then text bound to dollar name and then text field uh, description bound to text of dollar description then we'll add a navigation title of place details and then a toolbar with a single button saying save the call to the dismiss action when it's tapped hey dog um and that code's not going to compile by the way we'll be very happy with that code um, down here, because we haven't told it what location to use. So we could say in here, okay, our location is location.example. And when that's better, 
But it's now saying, well, you haven't provided name and description either. Why not? You want a scratch or some treats? What do you want? Scratch. Okay, fine. Um, you haven't provided name description, right? And that's up here. And normally would say, actually, this is going to be an empty string. And it's going to be an empty string here too. Um, but we can't do that here. Because we don't want to show empty strings. We want to show whatever the name of the location currently is. Whatever the description currently is. That's our starting point. Sure, they can modify it if they want to, but our starting point is the current name and current description. So we can't do that. The solution here is to make a new initializer that accepts a location to want to, to show and uses the name and description from there to create new state struct that we'll put into here and here. And it's going to use the same underscore approach we used with fetch requests. We had a custom initializer there to make fetch requests. And we made an underscore fetch request, which means we're making an instance of the property wrapper, in this case, the state property wrapper, rather than a new string that goes inside it. And so we'll make our initializer now. We'll say down here in it with a location. First, stash that away for later on. And second, give the dog a treat because she's clearly very, very hungry. Never gets fed. Come on. Oh, sister's now here too. Brilliant. Brilliant. There you go. Hey, kiss. Cheeky dog. All right, down you go. Come on, work in here. Helping folks. Underscore. Underscore name is a new state with the initial value of our location name. And then description, state, initial value, our location description. So we're making these state wrappers, giving them initial strings to work with, and placing those into the underscore, the, the hidden parts of our uh, properties, not the strings. These are the wrappers around the strings. And now, it'll be happier. This thing does not need to know the uh, state anymore. It'll figure it out from a location alone, which is great. So now our code compiles. But we've got a second problem, which is when we're done editing our location in here, how do we pass that location data back? How do we say, here you go, here's the new name, here's the new description. Now, we could attempt something like app binding here. Don't give me a copy of the thing, give me a binding back to the content view thing. That gets rather messy, because this wants to have a location. And our uh, content view is working with an optional location, not the same thing. And so we'll get confused and start fighting between optional and non-optional, it would be very pleasant. We're going to use the simplest solution we can. We'll require a property to call, a function to call as a property, sorry, um, when this thing has a new location to send back. So this means uh, we can have SwiftUI use this anywhere and get back some new data to process when it's finished automatically. So we'll say, Yes, give me a location, but also give me an on save closure, which will be a location returning void. Give this thing a location, expect nothing back. That's what it's doing here. And now you can use that inside our initializer down here. We'll say, you've got to pass me our on save closure at escaping, it takes location, returns void. And then uh, we'll also say, uh, stash that away here. Self to on save is on save. And then in our preview, just do underscore in. Ignore the value. Yeah, it doesn't have to do anything here because it never actually be saved. And that again makes our code compile. Now remember, this at escaping attribute here, that means um, this function will not be called immediately in the initializer. It'll be called later on. Tell Swift to keep memory alive, stash it away safely. So it can be called later on, not right now. In our case, when the user presses save here. Now, speaking of which, we're currently saying dismiss. Um, really, this thing has to make our new location. Copy the current one, modify whatever bits you want to change, and then call dismiss. As well as calling on save, of course. So we'll say first, make a new location from our current location. Set its name to be the new name from our local state value and its description to be our current local description. And that's all we'll do for now. We'll come back in a second, but we'll do that just for now. 
and then call on save with that new location. Pass that back to whoever called us to work with. So we're getting a copy of the original, making it variable so we can go ahead and modify its name and description. Otherwise, it'll enter fire and the latitude and longitude will stay the same. To be clear, it'll keep the same values as the original location. It'll have the same identifier. Keep that away for a head for a second. It'll matter in a moment. Uh, again, um, make sure you have it being used here if you want to. It doesn't really matter. A placeholder is perfectly fine. And that completes edit view for now. But there's still, of course, stacks of work to do in content view because we've got to present that new UI inside our sheet. Um, send in the location that was chosen and then handle updating our data at the same time. And thanks to the way we've built our code, it does not take much to do this. Um, down here in our sheet modifier, we can just say, show an edit view with location being our place, get a new location back in. And then if we can find that index in our location's first index of place, so remember, place here is the one that's currently chosen. Unwrapped to be non-optional. If we can find that in a location's array, track where it was found, that index here, where it was found. I do see you. I do see you, a good dog. And then we'll overwrite locations at that index with our new location. So find the current place index in our array. Find where it is currently. And then overwrite that index with the new location it was passed in from edit view and they pressed save. They're calling our completion closure. You are a monster. You're so hungry. You're so hungry. You get fed all the time. You are not a hungry dog. Give me a minute. <laughs> so we pass it all in, update our array immediately with the new data and run. So it'll cause the map to refresh itself. But press command R, give it a try run the code, make a change, see what you think. So I'll say up here, uh, we'll go to uh, here, approximately Aberystwyth, lovely part of the country. Press add, it's called new location, cool. Uh, I'll rename this to be here, uh, Aberystwyth, like that. I feel more like I'm struggling to spell on screen. <laughs> I'm a wrist with. I can't type on the screen. Sorry, that's my own fault. I'm getting too brave clearly on the screen. <laughs> this is deeply insulting for well speakers. I'm sorry. I should have spelled a wrist with. Sorry. Anyway, I'm a wrist with is now there. I believe spelled correctly. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry all of Wales. Sorry. Um, anyway, um, I'm a wrist with is there now spelled correctly. I press save. And it still says new location, which is best for me because my terrible spelling of Welsh place names. Um, it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked, which is annoying because we changed it. We can go back in. It's the location. Why is it not remembering what's going on here? What's happening here? And the problem is um, we told SwiftUI that we can identify our locations uniquely here equals equals by just comparing the ID. We said if the ID is the same, the whole object is identical. That's it, that's what we said here. And that's not true anymore. We're modifying the marker so the name is changing and maybe description as well is changing, but the ID staying the same. We've copied that from the original location. And so SwiftUI says, well, I've got this one annotation right now, Aberystwyth, oh, it's a new one, whatever. Um, and they have the same ID. They both are passing the equals thing as true. So I think they're the same. I'm not going to change my data. I'll leave it as it is right now. And that's not ideal. So we've got to say, actually, we've changed this place. It's a new place. And to do that, we want to make our identifier variable as well. And now modify that in edit view. So in edit view here, we'll say uh, our new location has a new identifier. Treat it as a new object. So if you will force a redraw for it. And now press Command R and see how that looks. Um, so I'll add a place name, somewhat easier to spell. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, here, um, also in Wales, this is Abergavenny. Now let's go all out and put it in Welsh. Venny. 
uh, here. Don't spell check me. <laughs> iOS, I'm trying my best here. Uh, then press save. And now it works correctly. So it is now understanding it's a different object, which is great. Um, I would say we're now copying all five objects and changing three of them. At some point, maybe now, there's a line you cross when you say, actually, I'll just use an initializer and make a new location from scratch and pass in an ID, name, and so forth. Um, where that line is is down to you. There's no hard and fast rule of, oh, yeah, copy the basic thing and just change values versus just make a whole thing from scratch. Experiment. Find an approach you like. Uh, at this point, the code works, uh, even with my shonky spellings. Um, you can go ahead and add more locations. You can say, you know, up here somewhere is a, uh, here approximately is Dundee, whatever. They all work, which is great. Uh, there we go. So we're going to have these two places right now. Um, but what you'll find is if you're busy, like adding stuff, say you live over here in East Anglia and say, um, this is home for me, uh, boom, that'll work great. There's home. But we then changed it to say a long title. So for example, uh, this is my home, then press save. You're going to see this dot, dot, dot. The name gets clipped on the map. And if you interact anywhere, like drag it around a little bit, it'll just snap in correctly. Boom. This is my home. Like that, as you can see, um, it's labeled being clipped until you move the map slightly. Now we can fix this with a new modifier called fixed size. <laughs> you are so relentless today. What you got on? You got a sticker. What you got a sticker for? Um, a new modifier called fixed size, which forces any of you to be given its natural size rather than try to accommodate the available spies given to it by its available size given to it by its parent. So say, hey, you save me this much, it's fine. Actually, I want this much. And it'll force it to be that size no matter what. In this case, the problem appears to be that map annotation, how a drawing R50UI views, isn't doing a good job of resizing its containers when they grow in size. That feels to me like a Swift UI bug, and it might go away in, by the time you watch this, perhaps, in the next version, who knows what. Um, in the meantime, we can fix it. We can just say, actually, I want to have a fixed size modifier here that will make sure our views have a fixed size no matter what. Make sure you give me the full amount of space no matter what the annotation says. And so if I say my uh, home's over here, I'll say you're called home. And then press save and modify it now to be, uh, this is my home. Boom. It will size correctly. It'll give the text a full size. So again, this kind of thing, come on, get it then. Come on, get it. Come on, get it. Come on, get it. Come on. Come on, get it. This kind of thing might go away at a moment's notice because actually, you know, you've, you've had a lot of treats. You, come and work for it. <laughs> come and work for it. Come and say hello. Oh, you're a big dog. You're a big dog. Um, there we go. Okay. Oh, there we go. So, <laughs> there you go. Start the show now the way you want it. Um, this kind of thing is a, feels like to me like a Swift UI bug. Uh, it might go away at a moment's notice. It might go away in two, three years. But the fix is nice and easy. Just add a fix size modifier and the problem goes away. The label always have the right amount of space. Isn't that right? You hungry dog. That'll teach you, eh? Get too many treats to get picked up.